And welcome, everybody. This is Games Over Plastic, a Bucky's podcast. Welcome back. I am Midnight, and I am joined with my two fellow sons of Geneva. First of all, we have the man, the myth, the legend, the master platinum trophy hunter, soldier first class, Sean Mason. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Really excited to talk about the OG Final Fantasy VII as we finally, someone here has finally played it for the first time. That's right. Yeah, I, I played, as you can probably tell by the title, I have played Final Fantasy VII, the original, for the first time ever in 2024. So I'm only, what, almost 30 years late, 27 years late, but better late than never. Um, also joined, of course, last but not least, by the master of graphics, the indie and live service gaming maestro, the Shinra executive, Hodge. How you doing? That's true. I'm a corporate stooge. Uh, one, you, you starting off this <laughs> podcast, you blew the fuck out of your microphone. It was like, and, uh, and then also, did you pronounce Genova Genova? I don't know yeah. how it's pronounced. It's Genova, Genova or Genova? <laughs> All right. Genova. Well, I blame that YouTube video that I watched because I watched a 23 minute recap of this before we recorded this to refresh my memory. And I swear that dude was saying like Genova. Yeah, he also, so yeah, but you, also you also said you also said that they said that Red 13 was a cat. He did. He, he absolutely. Sean, did he not? I mean, Hodge, did, did he not say yes. he was a cat? He did. Yeah. He did. Namora, he conf- Namora confirmed he's a dog. Yeah, he is <laughs> yeah. a dog. He looks like a dog. Yeah. When he said that, I'm like, he's not a, a cat. Wolf. That's a dog. What are you talking he's a, about? He's a big old wolf. You could maybe sell me on that he's kind of like a saber tooth tiger, like you said, Hodge. But uh, yeah, got but how you doing, Hodge? What's up? I'm good. I'm tired. I'm happy. It's a three day weekend, so and I'm excited to talk about this game that yes, you have put off for way too long. Especially being the Jap the or not Japanese RPG, but the RPG guy that you are, like the fact that you put off like what's considered one of the best RPGs of all time <laughs> for this long. It's it's so funny, but yeah, happy you played it. I'm happy to talk about it such a great game i'm sad sadly i didn't get to play it before we recorded this so i just had to do the recap because it's been a while i played it in, last played it in 2020 i think so it's been a while so i'm excited to discuss it. i did watch advent children recently though before rebirth came out but <laughs> but other than that yeah i haven't i haven't touched the original so I mean, I'm, I'm going to play it again this year but for now we're going to talk about it with just from memory that's right. We yeah, we just I, couldn't wait. We wanted to talk about it because it's mm-hmm. such a good game, you know. Yeah. yeah, I've replayed this game probably. I've definitely played it over thirty times. Definitely over thirty because I do a yearly playthrough now. Jesus. But when I was younger, yeah, I do a yearly playthrough every year. Well, I, no like I usually why you do it around time to play Skyrim and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I usually do it in. It, this game's so. Oh my god, it's like a. This is like a twenty-hour game. Not even. Yeah. Um. I usually do it in January or February this year. I definitely did. I did it in January this year. It was like right at the beginning of the year, just because I wanted to get it out of the way before rebirth. But when I was younger, I'd play this game like multiple times a year. I would back to back times. Like I would play it once and restart it immediately. God, I love it. <laughs> I, I respect it. It is phenomenal. And we're definitely going to get into that. Um, Sean, you want to show off your shirt real quick? We can only see the top. All right. Yeah. Beautiful I got shirt. The, I got the, uh, with the artwork on there, I got Aerith, Cloud, Tifa, Yuffie, Sid, Barrett, Red Thirteen, Vincent, and Kate Sid. Wow, you got every original, yeah, every important character pretty much. Yeah, I was actually kind of upset because I was hoping. So when I I do actually I I do remember buying the shirt. This was I bought the shirt a long time ago, but I forgot I had it because it was in my drawer, and then I just found it in like a couple weeks ago, and I'm like, oh, I gotta wear this on the pod. Um, but I remember when I bought it, it was advertised with Sephiroth on the back. And when I it came in the mail, Sephiroth wasn't on the back. Huh? How, how dare they? And the same, but then I ordered other shirts from this at the same time. So I got like six shirts at once. And one of them was a final fantasy six shirt and it was misprinted where like, it was supposed to have all the characters in the front, like in like their eight bit, I mean, their 16 bit sprites. And that was printed on the back and the shirt was just the front was just blank. <laughs> and I was like, what? Like it was the weirdest thing ever. So yeah, I don't buy shirts from them. No. That's funny. That was like the uh, the precursor to Wish or something. Uh, you were getting like those knockoff Chinese uh, shirts. Um, speaking of shirts that I was surprised and disappointed by the uh, the layout, you see my uh, Don't Mess With Texas Bucky's shirt here. Um, the reason why this is hanging on my wall is because I thought that was the front of the shirt. Like I thought 
that don't mess with Texas and the Bucky's what's going to be the front. That's the back of the shirt. Um, and on the front, it's just just this. Like you just see the just Bucky but no words, just Bucky on a blue shirt. And I was like, eh, I don't really like that. So I just hung it on my wall instead. It's it's now a, a poster. Um, but enough about Bucky's. We talk about him too much. Sean's always going on about Bucky. It's crazy. But let's get into Final Fantasy VII. First of all, let me just remind everyone, this is Games Over Plastic, the podcast for the agnostic gamers. This is DLC episode number two coming at you in the off weekend uh, spe- or off Monday. Uh, normally though, we come to you every other Monday with our regular episodes. Definitely check us out. We are available on all audio podcast services, Spotify, Apple podcast, overcast, uh, every cast that you can think of. We're on there. Um, also available in video glory with webcams, graphics, and everything, all the good fun shenanigans. Uh, you get to see my cat freaking out randomly. It's good times, uh, at youtube.com slash at games over plastic, or just search for games over plastic or even better. Since you're listening to my voice right now, look in the description of the audio version. There's a link to the YouTube right there. Um, but that's enough of this. Let's go ahead and hop into Final Fantasy VII. So this was an RPG from Squaresoft. It came out in 1997. It was on the PS1 or PS2? PS1. PS1 originally. PS2 was like three years away, dude. Yeah. Was it? Come on. Yeah. Come on. You call yourself a podcaster? Come on. I guess you're right, man. This is a long time ago. Come on now. I'm old, but you know, the memory goes when you get older. I wasn't even, I wasn't even two years old. <laughs> I wasn't even a year old. Never mind. I wasn't even a year old. Uh, Sean was a, uh, a massive Tifa fan in the womb. Yeah. The first Final Fantasy on PlayStation 2 was 10, right? Yeah. 10. Yeah. Yeah. My, oh my God. Jesus what is that? That's another game we could talk about. Wait, I'm, they, they dropped eight 10. and nine. They dropped eight, Dude, nine, and used- 10 in three years. They used to drop Final Fantasy used to be like yearly. That's they used to, they, they did seven in ninety seven, eight in ninety eight, nine in ninety nine. Uh, Final Fantasy was two thousand one. Well, two thousand for Japan, but two thousand one for the U.S. Yeah, that was, it was like a yearly occurrence. Yeah, it was back, back when day. take uh, game development was like a year too long, not <laughs> seven or eight. Dude, years it was like, like we're in now. It was like twenty people who made Final Fantasy seven. Yeah, you're yeah. insane. And nowadays, it takes five to seven years to make a game. Yeah, a um, and yet somehow, well, not no. I mean. A lot of studios are lucky to get one game out per freaking console generation at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and yet somehow we're yeah. still drowning in games and like I don't have enough time to play anything because there's too many yeah. damn studios now. <laughs> so it's yeah, a new right. problem. Um, yeah. But yeah, so let's go ahead and hop into the game, Final Fantasy VII. So let me go ahead and give, first of all, my thoughts of the game, my overall thoughts, and then we'll break it down um, since this is... Uh, you know, my first time playing it. These two, my co-hosts here, they challenged me to play it. You know, I had never played it, had to right the wrong. They were like, Midnight, you're going to play Final Fantasy VII, and they're going to play Skyrim, which they will do later this year, I assume. I've been um, playing it. I've put it off for a bit because I've been busy, but I've been playing it. You've been busy, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I played it, and it is absolutely phenomenal. I played it on the PlayStation 5. Um, I was using the cheats for sure for the combat. Had to do it. I tried the combat by itself. The combat, I wasn't really feeling that much, um, but the world, the characters, and the story, um, as well as the bosses, the boss fights, even with the cheats, um, you know, you can turn them off. I turned them off sometimes. Um, It was just awesome. It was such a good game. I absolutely love it. I see why this game is a masterpiece, 10 out of 10 type game. At the time, like if I was playing this in in 97, 2000, I'd probably say this is a 10 out of 10 game because it's just so revolutionary for, you know, the scope and everything was just crazy, I'd imagine back then. Um, But playing it in 2024, um, I'm not going to give it a 10 out of 10, but I am going to give it like a 9 out of 10. It was awesome. I freaking loved it. Um, I think I will maybe go back and play it again sometime too. Um, Not every year like Sean, but Who knows, maybe in like 2026 or something, I'll be a little bit bored and I'll be like, I'm going to replay Final Fantasy VII. Um, But I loved it. It was freaking awesome. Um, And yeah, we're going to just we're going to talk a whole bunch about it. But let me go ahead and pass this over to uh, to the man with the shirt. Sean, what are what are your overall thoughts and impressions and rating and score and and just general thoughts? Final Fantasy VII. I mean, I absolutely adore this game. Um, blows it blew me away when I first saw it. I, I first time I saw it ever it was like 2000. I watched my dad play like playing it, and just I fell in love with like the story and just like hearing my dad would tell me what's going on in the story and, um, you know, I could read a you know I could read wasn't illiterate, um, 
and I remember watching him play. And then I actually picked it up in like 2003 and played it on PS. Well, I played like the PS1 game on PS2, and that's when I really fell in love with the characters, and uh, it blew me away. And um, just like some of the themes they talk about, it it's really interesting how, like, you see how like Shinra's posed as like the like the the huge bad villain, but really like behind the scenes, Sephiroth was pulling all the strings with everything, trying to take over the world. And I, I absolutely love it. Um, the characters hold a real, like I'm really attached to the characters. Like cloud is like, I fell in love with cloud immediately. I used to run around my yard pretending to be cloud. That was a, that was great. I, I wanted to name our dog red 13. They, that was not allowed. That was not allowed. I wanted to though, really badly. And just like, Everyone. I mean, Kate Sith. I had a Kate Sith plushie as a kid from Japan. That was awesome. Just uh, um, some of the scenes, I, I can't believe you think about it. Like like the cross-dressing scene in Midgar. <laughs> like That came out in 97. Can you imagine that? Like 1997. Oh, if that came out today, people would be crying. Like, oh, this is so woke. <laughs> yeah. That's why I was shocked they kept it in remake. Like, It was great. Good scene. Japanese don't give a fuck about American wokeness. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah, good thoughts, Sean. Uh, did you have more? I didn't want to interrupt. I mean, I'm, this is my surface level surf. We're going to, we're going to keep talking. We absolutely are. I was going to say, um, you know why your dad didn't let you name the dog red 13, right? Oh no. My dad was on board for it, but who, who do you think said no? I'm guessing Mr. your mom, if you're dad, <laughs> my mom and my sister, my sister wanted to name it Metroid. But that, All right. That well, Metroid. <laughs> you ruined my joke Metroid in general. The joke was going to be the reason why they didn't let you is because you mixed the Apple Jacks with the uh, whatever cereal that he had. <laughs> Remember? You oh, that was that was long before I did that. That was long before okay. I did that. All right. All right. We're I was too scared see. at that point. <laughs> but yeah, Red 13, the cat. Good, good character. Good character. Yeah, he's a he's a dog. Um, Hodge, what's your high level thoughts and impression and rating if you want to Final Fantasy seven? Yeah, I've never, like, I think I've said this before. I've never really been a turn-based RPG person, but this one, ever since I was a kid, I loved it. I, like, I didn't understand the, you know, really complexities of this game as a kid, obviously. Like, the whole messaging, you know, kind of like the um, the pollution kind of stuff and the corporate greed and all. Like, I, I obviously, as a kid, that over the head, and you're just kind of like, yeah. oh, you're cool little anime characters attacking other anime. Like, it, and but it, the the setting the story like that kind of steampunk futuristic but also ancient kind of mixture like it's such an amazing setting and then obviously growing up and replaying it and actually understanding the plot and the complexities of it it's a really just unbelievable story and um yeah it's really the only final fantasy that i really like adore and have played through multiple times. I've a lot of other final fantasies. I've never even finished. Like I never finished 15. I never finished 10, um, nine. I've actually never played, which I know is a sin. I actually do want to play that one also. Cause I, and then I played good. eight as a kid really and good. never went back to it just cause it never oh. hit as hard. Like I always loved squall. He was a cool character, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm more the design. I, I like, I like the gun sword, yeah. but, um, but yeah, like Final Fantasy VII, like there's a reason why everyone was for years demanding remakes of it and all this because it's like their crown jewel. And so, yeah, I, I love it. And I was so happy to replay it and then finally get to remake in 2020 and all that. And yeah, I this game, it's really one of the few turn-based JRPGs that I can't say enough good things about. Yeah, this the the combat system is what I I really enjoy the combat system in this game. Uh, particularly the act, it's like act of turn based. Like you can't just sit there; mm -hmm. you'll get killed. Um, and that that was a, a little bit of an um, Final Fantasy started with um, active ATB, basically active turn based combat around Final Fantasy four. And each game kind of evolved on that, which is really cool because um, you know. As much as I love, I do love just like the regular turn base where you can take your time and really think about what move you want to do. But at, at sometimes that, that does get boring after a while. And um, that's what I love about seven. It just it, it was awesome. I love the limit gauge like that was that was new to Final Fantasy seven was the limit and for Final Fantasy uh, for the Final Fantasy genre. And it was like the first, you know, it was the first 3D one. And I know people don't like the graph. Like some people think the graphics don't hold up. But I, I like the like Hodge had said a few uh, last last time we recorded, like I like the polygonal figures, especially in Final Fantasy. Um, like 
the way that cloud, just the way that they look and the way that they run around in like the overworld, it's I, I think it's aesthetically pleasing to be mm-hmm. honest. And um, you had brought up like the pollution and everything. Yeah, that like flew over my head as a little kid. But then, you know, replaying it so many times, I like, start picking up on it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like a meta commentary on like w- the world. And mm-hmm. even you know, playing it 15 years, so like came out in '97, playing it in 2012, you can relate to it in 2012. Playing it now, you can still relate to it. it it's it's talking about like problems that are still going on, and that is what is it was so ahead of its time and that um but yeah overall it's great oh and the materia system's awesome yeah i loved uh when rebirth came out and they had the you know like the the people who just get paid to be angry on twitter were like oh my god the game went woke talking about pollute it's like do you not play the the same thing (laughs) it's the same thing yeah um did you hodge when you first played it did you play it before remake obviously Mm -hmm. did you think it was mako um i always said mako or no yeah, I Mako. always said Mako. I was Mako. I said Mako. Always said it growing up. Yeah, Mako, Mako, Mako. Yeah, I always said Mako, uh, but I definitely didn't say Geneva. So I said Mako. Is it, <laughs> I still kind of say Mako. Is that not what it is? No, it's Mako. Which it really threw me off when I first when I first heard like the one of the first trailers for rebate uh, remake, and you hear Barrett say Mako. I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the few things I actually did say correctly, because there's so many times when I've read a book or seen a game that had text that gets remade and they say it different. I'm like, oh, I've been saying this for like, like uh, when Harry Potter first came out, when the movie came out, I thought it was like Hermione or something. And it was Hermione. Oh, did you really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I never said I'm um, a, I've never said I'm a smart man. So. No, you're smart. I mean, I do have a question for you. What did you think of, so since you've played Remake and Rebirth, Mm -hmm. what did you think about the locations compared to how they are portrayed in the Remake and Rebirth? Because obviously they're a lot down, they're downscaled to like probably a tenth of the size, a lot of them. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, Obviously, it was a lot smaller and a lot more abridged, um, but I still, I greatly enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed the polygonal graphics too. I thought it was beautiful. Um, even though like I'm playing this in 2024, obviously the graphics are extremely dated. There's st- there's this like timeless quality to it, um, almost like a cell shaded. You know how you look like a cell shaded uh, game and it looks good no matter when you play it. Um, this kind of almost had that effect because like it was crisp and clean, but it was it was just polygonal. You know, it, it just it looked like a choice design choice, um, even though it it wasn't. But that it just it came off that way, so it was good. But yeah, I was surprised by uh, how short the Midgar section was because, you know, I'm done with Midgar in like two, maybe three hours. Uh, and of course, in the remake, they did a whole 30 hour game, 35 hour game mm-hmm. that was basically all Midgar. So I was surprised. Everything was really abridged and condensed. Like when you go to Calm, the city um, in the original game, it's it's literally just like four or, f- four or five buildings in like a circle, I think. Um, whereas, you know, it's like a whole ass city in uh, in reunion or whatever uh whatever the second one what what was it rebirth. the one we just played rebirth rebirth, rebirth. rebirth. Yeah. rebirth. Yeah. there's too many r names man uh but yeah in rebirth it, it. it was like a full ass city um so it was obviously very condensed um you know on the open map when you're traveling most of the open map you know because of the times and we're talking about the playstation one here uh it's mostly just like open green fields um and then you'll see like a building that mm-hmm. kind of represents that there's a town there and you just kind of walk into it. So it's kind of condensed and basic, but I really loved it. There was a charm to it. Um, I thought the graphics was timeless. I thought the story was immaculate. The story is so deep. Um, I, there's even stuff that even after I played, so I played remake, I played rebirth and then I played final fantasy seven original all within like a year or two span kind of, um, well, the first, the first remake I played probably two years ago, but whatever. So I played all these, but there was even stuff that I still kind of missed because when I watched the recap to refresh my memory before we recorded today, um, there was a couple things that I was like, oh yeah, I didn't really connect those two dots there. Um, so like, it's just a very deep story with like great lore and it all kind of goes together in this perfect synergy and like it all makes sense once you, once you connect those dots. Um, but when you're first playing it, you're kind of confused. You don't know what the hell is going on um, until those dots start to align. Um, but yeah, what did, what did you guys think about, uh, let's go ahead and talk about what kind of bridge off of what you asked me. Let's talk about the graphics, the combat and and the world design. What, what did you guys think about that and how it held up and just, you know, we kind of already touched on it, but a little bit more if you want. 
Are you talking about? Are you talking about like compared to the new ones or just in general? Of- just in general, like, uh, or compared to the new style. Well, because I was going to say with the levels in compared to the new ones, uh, other than um, God, what was it Gengaga? I hated that open area, yeah, but Gengaga. Uh, but yeah. it is really cool to see how much. I mean, even the story on top of the graphics and locations on how much was expanded. Like in the original, Dine is you know just a very it's just a very minor part of the game that you get through pretty quickly. But that moment, that whole plot line in Rebirth was. I like teared up at that one because it was so good. And Mm -hmm. uh, so it was really cool. Uh, Obviously we don't want to do spoilers for these other games. So I'm just going to kind of go with what's in original compared with um, obviously we don't want to talk about the differences in the games, but uh, the um, yeah, just the size and scope and what it got expanded on. Like, like I remember how you said you were surprised you were only in Midgar for like two hours or whatever. I remember when, they announced remake way back in the day and like it's going to be a three parter and the or i think they just said it was going to be multiple games i don't think they confirmed three but they're like the first one is going to just take place in midgar and everyone's like they're going to expand a 2 hour opening portion of this game into a 40 hour game like that's going to be terrible and then of course it came out and everyone fell in love with Biggs and uh, Jesse and like and you by the end of that game you loved them and when you lost them like obviously it happens in the original like in the original they die and you're like okay bye and the that one you're like ah oh, no come on <laughs> don't want to lose them and so it was a it's just really cool that the new ones made you love the characters more so i guess kind of what would you think about coming from playing those first where you kind of go back and th- these people who are fleshed out weren't as fleshed out in this game like how do you how do you look at yeah. it? I guess kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, in the original, they definitely don't make you care at all about Jesse or Biggs or or, or Wedge or whatever because you only see them for like a split second. Mm. Um, so I thought it was cool seeing them again in this game. Um, but yeah, I mean, when they honestly when they died, I, I didn't really care that much in uh, in this because even though I had experienced them in the older games. Um, you know, I'm playing the, this game and in this game, I didn't really know or care about them. And I'm just like, all right, well, they're gone and we're moving on. Uh, you know, I was. I was trying, I was really excited about getting to the point where it caught up to what I've already played in, um, you know, in Rebirth or whatever, so that I could see what's new. Yeah. Um, Because obviously there are divergent paths and stuff, but I really wanted to get into the whole new story. Um, So that's really what I was looking forward to. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And it gets gets pretty, like, in depth. Like, there's a lot that happens after Aerith, like, all the, the kaijus and stuff. Like, I can't wait to see how that plays out in the next one, uh, the next remake game. But yeah, that was, that was insane. And the, so you can, yeah, you can kind of see that Aerith dies, what, halfway through the game or something like that. Like she, yeah, yeah. It's, it's right at the, yeah. It's like right at the end of what disc, uh, disc two would be. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, an, it's really cool. Cause that's like the moment everyone remembers. And if you were thinking of it, like as a movie, you'd probably think like that's what happens, which leads cloud to killing Sephiroth, but no, there's still ten more hours of game left after that, and yeah, you, it's, you still have to go to the entire northern continent. Continent, yeah, and yeah, so I'm ex- I'm excited to kind of see how that plays out in the new one, but yeah, it's it's a lot. Of people don't realize how much happens after Aerith in the game. Yeah, I remember. Uh, it's funny. I was. I was like in my head, I was like, okay, I'm really close to then. I'm about to beat this game. I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> um, and you know, I'm up in the north. I'm I'm snowboarding down the snowboarding mini game down there. I'm doing all this stuff, you know, to get to Sephiroth or whatever. And then all of a sudden it says uh, like end of Act Two or whatever it was, and it's like start of Act Three or whatever. And I'm like, what? There's a whole nother act because the acts were long. And I'm like, oh damn. Yeah. I'm like, I, I don't. I kind of wanted this game to end, even though it was great, you know. Even when a game's great, though, you you anticipate the ending. You know, you want to have that payoff. Um, so I was like, man, there's a whole other act. But that third act was real short. Uh, you just basically go down in the hole. And um, what do we want to talk about next, guys? We want to talk about the characters. Who's our favorite characters? Um, let's do that. Sean, why don't you talk to us I mean, about the I, characters? I mean, Cloud's, if we're sticking with you, I mean, Cloud's my favorite character. I really like his whole backstory as a soldier and everything like that it's funny though in the original how late into the game you find out that um he wasn't actually doing a lot of the things that he said he was doing that Mm -hmm. he put himself into zach's shoes basically um you find out so late pretty much 
probably like three fourths to 80% through the games when you find that out. Yep. Um, and it kind of delves a lot more into like, kind of opens your eyes like oh like what's going on what's what's going on with his in his mind again as a kid that like flew over my mind like oh what, what do you mean he's li- he's oh he lied about it but no then you realize like you know he's suffering from you know a lot of ptsd and a lot of you know it could be mako poisoning um uh, a lot of that but i loved cloud for just his overall his growth as a character at the beginning of the game he's like yeah he really doesn't care he's like oh i'm here for the money uh, and then eventually he grows to love, you know, Barrett, Tifa. I mean, he already loved Tifa, but he grows to love his friends and his companions and will go out of his way and do anything for them. So that's why I like Cloud so much. But like I said, I love them all. Uh, wasn't a big fan of Yuffie in the original. I didn't really like her dialogue or any of her. I like I didn't like that. Hi, yeah. Do you guys do you think it's weird that she's a, um optional character? Midnight? Uh. I mean, I guess, yeah, her and Vincent are both optional. Of course, I got them because I wanted the trophies. Um, I would have got Yuffie regardless because you guys know I love Yuffie. She's one of my favorite characters in the series, um, even though you don't like her. I think I think she's funny. I think she's awesome. And I did love that in this one, um, she is a very optional and a very almost forgettable character in the original because she doesn't have as much uh, screen time or voice lines. But I did love one thing that she was doing in the original that they obviously carried over to the remake is she was doing this little, the little fist thing that she does all the time. Yep. That's just yep. funny. She's like, yeah. I don't know why she does it, but it's funny. I like Yuffie. Yuffie's awesome, man. She's out there stealing materia, man. Um, but yeah, I mean, you always said that a lot of times you didn't even recruit her. Uh, is yeah, that because you're just kind of speed running the game because it's like your 21st time? time. Not that I'm not speed running. I, I try to do like different things. And Yuffie, I never really use in combat unless I absolutely have to. Um, she, I don't like her. I, she's the way she do, um, fights in the combat is so much better in the remake and rebirth like the newer games compared to the turn base i did, don't like her turn base i i don't like her regular attacks i i'm not a big fan of them in the turn base combat that's fair that's fair yeah and in the remake i think no doubt she's like the best character in the game combat wise because of her ability to ma- manipulate all the elements and just hit the weak spots um and she's just so fun how she's warping around but this this isn't about the remakes um Sean, what or Hodge? Sorry, what were you thinking about the characters? What were you? Who are your favorites and thoughts? Are you muted, sir? Muted. Come on, man. Come on, professional podcasting. Here. Sorry, there was ma- there was noise in my house, so I didn't want to <laughs> to get p- picked up. But uh, I I was kind of going to quickly go off of what Sean said. Of as a kid, I didn't I didn't realize that Cloud was not really lying, but wasn't didn't know he wasn't a soldier. I just always assumed he was, and Zach was just his friend. And then when you play it, replay it when you're older, you're like, oh. No, he's lost his mind and he just his mind and Zach's mind is just kind of combined in his head. Yeah. And uh, so that was always awesome. And then Tifa, I, the other thing, obviously, I, I, I admitted before that pretty much until Rebirth, I always assumed Tifa and Barrett were married. And then you, you realize Cloud's in love with her and she's in love with Cloud and all that. But um yeah, the uh, the optional stuff is really cool. I always liked I, I actually like you kind of the same as you uh, midnight. I love playing as Yuffie in the remakes, but in the original, and I remember saying in our spoiler cast, I didn't really like Tifa. I don't like her up close stuff, but when you're doing turn based, her pot, her attacks are really good and she's a really good character to play as. So I liked always playing as her, uh, obviously kept, you know, cloud. And then I always liked playing as Vincent because he could transform into the wolf and all that. And so it was really cool. And I wonder, I'm curious off, off the little side tangent of, I, I wonder how that's going to play out in the next, uh, remake but um in terms of this one yeah i always every character Aerith i kept for a while until she died just because she was a good healer especially in a turn base when your characters hit and you're like oh crap if they hit me again i'm done so you kind of have to use her so having a healer on the team is a lot better in a turn base than in an action rpg um so i had her in my party a lot and uh yeah i i liked every character because even especially replaying it after playing the remakes and stuff, you kind of, you get that uh, attitude of each character kind of over it, but you could even, it still poked through in the old one. Like everyone just had that same attitude. Like Barrett was still a kind of the gruff, like, you know, kind of explosive yeah. guy who was always like, come on, like kind of dude. And yeah. you could tell he Vince, sounds just like I pictured. Yeah, exactly. And Vincent, yeah, he's he the, he's this like, like somber kind of, you know, toned emo, down. You could tell you vampire. 
yeah, you could tell Yuffie's very upbeat and ecstatic. So, yeah, it's really, they did a great job capturing the later ones. But, yeah, all those characters, there's not a character. Like, if I, the only character I consider kind of forgettable and that I don't think too much about is Sid. Because, like, Ooh, okay. yeah, like, I don't, I don't dislike Sid. and But I, I mostly think of him as the guy who, who helps you with your gummy ship in Kingdom Hearts. Like, I think of him more in Kingdom Hearts than in Final Fantasy VII. Um hey. It's funny you say that because in the Final Fantasy community, Sid from Final Fantasy VII, up until 16, because now Sid from 16, 16 is, is great, like the, yeah. Is the best. But Sid from 7 was considered like the goat Sid. Yeah. Yeah, like I don't I don't it's dislike funny. him at all, of course, yeah. but it's just he was always the one I always kind of forgets a party member and I wouldn't use him too much. I used him when I replayed in 2020 because I wanted the achievement of get, getting everyone's um like powered up uh limit or whatever. I can't remember yeah. what it is, but so I used him for that, but um yeah, I, I, there's not a character I dislike in this. Like, it's it's the same with the story. There's not a part in the story I dislike. There's no character I dislike. The setting is beautiful. Like, I can <laughs> I love this game. It's it is probably a ten out of ten for me. And like we talked about the graphics, I love the pixelated over kind of the painterly backgrounds and all that. Like, I love it all. And um, just yeah, and in the later ones, how everyone's expanded. The only <laughs> only time they're expanded for the worst is Advent Children, but. Uh, but other than that, yeah, there's not a character I dislike in the original, I would say. All right. Yeah. Um, um, I have, I have a question for you though. Midnight. Sure. Of the locations that we have not seen in remake and rebirth, mm. um, so that only you've only seen in the original, which one are you looking forward to most seeing expanded? I mean, I'm trying to even remember what they were. I mean, there was Wu Tai. There was the snow area. Wu Tai. Um, I don't, I don't know if I even went to Wu Tai when I played the game. I think I somehow missed that. Where was Wu Tai? What happened? You definitely went to Wu Tai. <laughs> yeah. Did yeah, I? You went to Wu Tai. Yes. What was Wu Tai? Yes. Which area? It's where was Yuffie's that? from? I just picked her up in the forest. <laughs> um. I don't know about I don't know about Wu Tai, man. Um, I don't remember anything really about Wu Tai other than that she's from there. Oh, um, is that? Are you sure that's not missable? I don't. There, I just sent it in our in our group chat. That's uh, okay. Discord. That's what Wu, you'll so... you'll recognize it right when you look at that. No, I didn't go there. What? I didn't see Wu Tai. Um, so you you have to have because when you recruit Yuffie, you have to go there. No, I didn't go there. <laughs> I absolutely did not go there, and I recruited Wu Tai. I mean, I recruited Yuffie and did not have to go there. What do you mean? Okay, well, I, I'm you telling you 100 all... percent that I. Okay, did not no, go there. no, I'm asking you. I'm not. Did you do the all her side quests too? No, I didn't even know she oh, had so, side okay, quests. So, okay, yeah, there's a side quest you bring her back to Wu Tai. It's after you get Sid. How how do you even get a side quest? Does she talk to you? Like, I mean, it's not like it's not like it, like it's not like in remake and rebirth where it like triggers like, oh, you've started this side quest. It's like you just know. Well, how would I just know? <laughs> I didn't I know. I mean, you talk so. to her and then you, you it you talk about going back to Wu Tai and then you take the tiny Bronco and you go to Wu Tai. It's on an island. You probably had the okay. conversation, you just didn't do Dude, there's probably <laughs> Yeah. There's probably there's definitely stuff that I missed, and that's why I said I'm I'm gonna go back and replay it sometime. Uh, because I a hundred percent did not go to Wu Tai. Um, I didn't see that, that didn't happen for me. And that does kind of suck because uh, that would have been cool. So apparently there are a couple things that I missed out on still. But that's not so bad because that'll give me something fresh for the remake. It'll be like DLC, you know. I didn't do like any of the side quests. I, I think I just kind of stuck to the main quest. Like they're like, okay, go here. Okay, go here. Okay, we got to go here. We got to chase Sephiroth now. He's over. He's headed this way. I just kind of followed like the uh, the golden path. So there's probably some missions and areas that I missed, unfortunately. Um, yep. Shame on me. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll make that right later on when I replay it. it it's essentially you, you're under the impression when Yuffie joins you, it's under the impression that she's going to leave when she goes to Wutai. She isn't like totally committed to you guys. But then you go through the chapter and then she's like, all right, you know what? I'm going to stay with you guys. Mm hmm. Yuffie's awesome. I love Yuffie. Uh, Yuffie just has like this this childlike innocence um, and like this wholesome quality about her, where she thinks that she's going to save her whole country by stealing all the materia to give the materia to her country and power them up or whatever. Um, and I just I don't know. I just like that. I just think she's uh, she's very wholesome and very cool. Um, and her combat, like we talked about in the remake, is just stellar. It's amazing. So I'm a big Yuffie fan. 
Um, as far as parties um, go, transition a little bit. Um, I always made sure that I kept her in my party just because I like her as a character. I kind of rocked the same party that I did in the remake. Um, I rocked uh, Cloud, Barrett, and Yuffie. That was like my main three um, fighting. Um, I will say, since we're talking about characters, um, you know how I was I was really big about how Aerith, Aerith is the best girl. Oh, Aerith is so good um, in the remake. That's not the case in the original at all. Um, I feel like one area where the original game kind of falters a bit is character development. Um, it doesn't do it nearly to the extent that the remake does. Um, obviously, um, I feel like I didn't. I barely cared about Aerith at all. Uh, maybe I missed her side quest. I don't know. Um, but there wasn't much relationship or character building between Cloud and Aerith at all in the original for me. Um, and there even wasn't too much with Tifa, but there was definitely more with Tifa. Um, so I liked Tifa a lot more in the original than I did Aerith. It, it's funny you say that because, at, you know, you gotta, you gotta think about like the time it came out in 1997. Um, at the time this was considered like insane character development for these characters compared to the other JRPGs that were coming out around the time. I mean, think about it. You have to go back and look at final fantasy six, which came out on super Nintendo final fantasy four in the U S but, um, this was like the way that they developed some of these characters was light years ahead of what they did with Final Fantasy VI. Final Fantasy VI, yes, you had some. I don't want to, you know, spoil that. You just there was a ton of characters in Final Fantasy Final Fantasy VI, but it was like a mile wide and an inch deep in character development outside of a select few characters. Um, this was greatly expanded. It so you got to think about it in the time. Obviously, when you compare it to Remake and Rebirth, they do such a such better job at expanding it. Obviously, I think side quests, like having side quests that you can actually track and it, you know, it indicates to you, hey, you're starting this side quest will help a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, because back then there, there, there were side quests. But again, it wasn't like it wasn't like you weren't tracking. You weren't tracking it. There wasn't something telling you, hey, you just completed this. Here's your reward. It was more of like, the payoff is the dialogue you got from it. So for, um, for example, there's certain side quests that if you get, it affects later events in the game. Mm. Yeah. Unfortunately, I definitely missed some good stuff. I'd have to replay it with a guide maybe or something to make sure I don't miss stuff. Cause I even, uh, miss like, you know how you fight the, uh, the monsters or whatever, the Kaiju, uh, what, what did they, what, what were they called in this game? I forget. Um, you know, the big, the big monsters that protect the planet that come out. Um, I don't remember. Weapon, they were called, right? Weapon? Yeah, they're called Weapon. Yeah, yeah. Weapon. So I, I, there's apparently, I think there's like four of those that you were supposed to fight and kill, and I only killed like one or two of them. I didn't even fight all of them. The so there's means. definitely well, you stuff don't have, I missed. You don't, yeah, you don't have to fight all of them. Yeah. Yeah. So but, um, the only one you have to is one that's trying to destroy the village while there's comatose cloud or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the one in the ocean is impossible. <laughs> That one is- oh, I did fight that one, and he wiped my party. Yeah, yeah. Like when I was down there with the submarine. Immediately. Yeah, yeah, and that was those with are, cheats on. Like- I had cheats on, and he wiped my party. Yeah, <laughs> the, those are like the optional super bosses that yeah. like you don't have to do, but it's like rewarding if you do. Mm-hmm. It's like Sephiroth in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or most most JRPGs have those optional super yeah, bosses, exactly. especially in the PS One era. Oh, those optional super bosses were all over the place. <laughs> um. Good stuff. Um, so what do we want to talk about next, guys? We want to talk about the the overall story um, and what we thought of that. Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the in the overall story here, I would say I thought it was a masterpiece, like I said. Um, I love how it starts out where you're just like, you know, you're trying to take down Shinra because, like you said, they seem to be the big bad. Um, but it comes to find out that Shinra is not actually necessarily the bad guy completely um they're actually sort of helping you along the way they're trying to stop sephiroth as well um really the main villains from what i understood uh, are uh sephiroth and hojo uh, hojo is kind of like the, the cause of a lot of this stuff because you know all the he basically made sephiroth right um yeah and like he's always experimenting and doing all this stuff and injecting people and he's just an overall douche Nobody likes him. It was great <laughs> killing him. I really can't wait to kill him in the remake. But, Ojo's uh, just a mad scientist. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's the reason why Cloud is so messed up. He's the reason why Sephiroth is the way he is. He's the reason why we have these crazy creatures we have to fight. And he just takes so much joy in making people miserable. And he has ulterior motives, too. Like He, he knows how to manipulate people into doing what he wants to get done. 
Um, I think they do an incredible job in his writing in this game and just um, his overall dialogue. Of, of all the quote unquote people working for Shinra, I think he they do a great job with his dialogue. You can you can feel the the grossness that he like he just he just looks he just sounds gross like in my mind every time I hear him talk I'm like oh there's something up with this guy and Hojo's his name like come on dude um he, he would have been a he yeah, would have loved the movie Human Centipede I'm sure <laughs> oh my god I I've I've seen it <laughs> yeah it's I just saw the South Park very... episode that's all I saw it's a very bad movie yeah. but he would have loved yeah. it because he's crazy yeah that's like a Hojo movie right there yeah exactly <laughs> exactly yeah. But yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with you, Midnight. He is like the 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 string leader. The he's pulling all the strings behind the scenes. He knows what he's doing. He's manipulating everyone. He just wants the world. He he likes chaos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, he sucks. Yeah, and I remember then early on, I think he uh, he threw Red Thirteen and Aerith in like a cage together, and he's like, "All right, you guys are going to have sex now and and make a kid, and that's gonna." that's going to save the world or it's going to recreate uh, Genova or whatever. I forget what he was even trying to, he was trying to make an ancient or something, right? Like yeah, this dude is just ancient. crazy. Yeah. He's weird as hell. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? We got to rescue them. This dude is freaking weird. I, I couldn't wait to kill him. All right. So let me go ahead and let's go ahead and get into the story here. Let's just get into the overarching story. Um, so you got, of course, in the beginning, you know, they're just, they're taking down the reactors because, Shinra, which they call the Shinra, which I thought was funny. <laughs> Did you notice that they call him the Shinra in the game? Yeah, they call it the Shinra. Yeah, um, but like yeah. The Facebook. So all we really know is that you know that Shinra is taking too much Mako from the planet, so we have to bomb the reactors and we have to stop them. Um, but the story is so much deeper than that. Like you come to find out um, that you have Sephiroth is like created by Hojo, the piece of shit. Um, and he is controlling all of the, the mindless people. Like he can kind of possess them, um, to do his bidding, um, which was really cool. And basically he's trying to get the black materia to summon meteor. Um, so let's talk about that scene. So you go with the party, right. And you go to the temple of the ancients, um, to get the black Mm -hmm. materia. Um, this is where Kate Sith has his moment where he uh, his redemption arc, because you remember he betrays us in Golden Saucer. He takes the black material and gives it to the Turks. Right. But then he has his redemption arc, which is cool because um, he sacrifices himself because he's he's a he's a doll. He sacrifices himself. We get the black material. Right. And I think this is where we kind of first really see Sephiroth Hodge um, like you were you were briefly mentioning earlier. <laughs> Um, because he kind of mind controls cloud into giving up the black materia. Mm -hmm. Um, what did you guys think about that moment in the original, um, versus the remake? I thought it was really well done. I mean, it was heartbreaking when I was, you know, the first time you play through it, when you see him just take out Aerith. And again, at that point, you don't think like a main character, like a main character is not going to die. What are they talking about? Hadn't got to the Aerith yet. Cause that was after the temple of ancients, right? She goes to pray. Yeah, I thought we were talking. I thought we were talking about the whole. We can talk about both. Go ahead. I thought we were talking about like, the whole thing. Um, but okay, we, I'll I'll stick with that. The the t- I, I thought that whole thing was pretty cool. You know, going after the black materia to try to summon a meteor that's going to destroy the world. It's pretty intense because you're like, what is the alt? What what what's the end goal here? Like, yeah. you're going to destroy the world. Okay, you're not trying to take over the world. You're trying to destroy it. It's very it's very different than. Um, what most you know cookie cutter villains like i'm gonna take over the world and i'm gonna rule it no we're gonna destroy it yeah it it is really weird because i didn't understand what his motive was at all um either apparently and and the video recap that i watched kind of helped uh break it down too um apparently what he's trying to do and i'm sure you know this sean is uh you know he wants the meteor to strike earth or the planet and cause massive damage which will cause the life force to congeal around that area to heal the planet and then he wants to absorb all of it and just become like su- yeah. super villain sephiroth and then control what's left of the world i guess um that's his, his it, weird just, motive yeah to me it, it came off when i you know when you first start playing it it came it, it, just, it was very odd to me that like as this big bad guy who wants to you know like, essentially just he's gonna kill everybody there's gonna be nothing left like that was always my interpretation of it. There's like you cast meteor on this thing. There's going to be nothing left. Yes, you're going to absorb everything, but what's the point if there's nothing to control? There's nothing to gain. It's almost like he's obsessed with power, and he just wants to be the most powerful thing on Earth, or in Gaia. 
That's a good point. What do you guys think his motive is? Is it is it revenge? Do you think he's mad about how they treated his yeah. mother, Geneva, so he wants to just destroy everybody and control? Because he's, he's going to be ruling over, what, a wasteland, kind of? Um, what do you think, Hodge? Yeah, I think it's definitely he's taking revenge for his mom, but it's I think it's also that he just snaps and loses his mind, and he's just like, you've lied to me my entire life. I'm going to kill you all, like, kind of thing. Like, it's not really, like... He is an in-depth character, but he also just kind of has that psychoticism of just like, I'm going to destroy all of you because of what you did to me kind of thing. Yeah. Well, he changes. He changes in the, like a second. Like he's all he's all for, you know, I'm a soldier. I'm first class soldier. I'm going to save everyone. I'm, I'm doing this for the good of the planet. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, snap mm-hmm. of a second, he changes. Yeah. He goes, he... He's like, you know what? I'm. I'm going on a rampage. I know what I need to do. I'm going to get the black material. I'm going to cast meteor. I'm going to destroy everything. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, because he sees, uh, he sees Genova or whatever in the, uh, or Genova in, um, in that reactor, right in the thing. And he's like, wait, that's my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he starts reading and he sees like all the experimentation that took place. And he's like, he just snaps. Like you said, yeah. Um, Hodge, what were you going to say? I was going to say, yeah, he basically goes crazy just having himself cooped up in that library at the basement of the mansion, just reading everything and just, just basically over time, realizing that his entire life is a lie. And so, yeah, he just <laughs> goes ape shit and it's like, all right, well now everyone's dead. So, <laughs> All right. So then let's keep pressing along with the story. So after that, um, Cloud hands the black materia off to uh, Sephiroth and he flies away to summon Meteor. Um, and then Aerith is like, All right, you know, this isn't working. I'm going to go bring out my ultimate trump card. So she goes to like, uh, what, the, 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 the paradise place or whatever to pray? What do they call it? The Temple of the Ancients? No, it's not the Temple city, of the Ancients. It's the City of the Ancients. The City, city of the of Ancients. ancients. Um, and she has her white materia for, uh, what is it? Cure? Not cure. Holy. Holy. Prayer. Holy. So she holy. does her prayer yeah. to summon holy to protect the planet. And that's when one of the most iconic moments of, of gaming happens. That's when Sephiroth comes down, <laughs> kills Aerith, rip. Rest in peace, Aerith. You will be missed. Uh, what was your guys' thoughts about that? Especially because you guys, I knew it was coming. Obviously, it had been spoiled for me. You guys, presumably, when you first played it, you might not have known that that was coming. What were your thoughts when that happened? I was blown away. Like I said, or like I had said, like I didn't think they'd kill off a main character. Like I never expected that. Or if they were going to do it, I figured, oh, this is the end of the game. Then this has to be the end of the game. Yeah. Um, and it, it's really interesting, especially they kill off a character who's a playable party member, and the game continues. You're like, what? Like that is not something that games did at this time or even yeah. even today we don't really see playable party members get killed in basically you know halfway through a game you know two-thirds through a game it was very different and again it just adds to that that build up of like you're you're building up to all this tension and it just adds to that and i thought that was it was a great for the time it's such a great idea to do and i'm surprised not more games have done that mm-hmm. yeah what about you hodge it's like it's the, it's the gaming equivalent of Luke, I am your father. It's like the moment that everyone knows when you think of gaming moments. Like I try to not obviously try not to spoil things for people because I want people to experience it if they ever get into it. But at the same time, it is a 30 year old game. So I don't, I'm not shy about saying, oh, yeah, it's like this part in Final Fantasy, you know, when when uh, Aerith gets killed. But uh, yeah, it was it's one of those moments where. I know it was impactful and I know that it was, you know, mind blowing at the time, but I don't have like a specific memory of seeing it for the first time in the same way. I don't really remember the first time I watched empire and saw Luke. I am your father, like, or no, I am your father's technically blind, but, uh, wait, what y- <laughs> you, you just spoil star Wars. For yeah. Me? My Come bad, on, man. My bad. That, damn, that, I didn't know that, 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 that 40 year old movie, 45 year old movie. Um, I didn't know that. Damn. All right. Yeah. But, uh, it's, it's just, yeah. Like, yeah, I guess I can't really speak. I, I don't remember it. It's been so long. I was six years old when the game came out, so I don't remember it specifically. But it is, yeah, it's one of the most iconic moments in video games, and it's for a reason. Like you said, you're you're getting rid of a character that you've been playing as for ten 
10, 15 hours. And all of a sudden it's just like, Oh, you've basically flower. known her since the 15 minutes into the game. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And so it, it's yeah. flower girl. And like, there are games where, you know, a character goes away or you lose them or they die or whatever. But then there, you just get another character. That's the same thing. Just a new skin kind of thing. So the gameplay never changes or the, end or the, end of the game. game ends. Yeah. Or the game ends. Yeah. Whereas this, yeah, she's the, the mage, the healer and you lose, you just lose it. That aspect of your party. And it's, so it is like, in terms of the plot, it's a devastating moment because you lost someone you care about. But in the gameplay, it's also a devastating moment because you lost your your healer or your mage if you like using magic. And uh, you're Donald, you're Donald Duck. Uh, so it's just like, yeah, it's it's a it's a huge moment and it's iconic for a reason. We also can I, I want to build off of what we said about the revenge Sephiroth's motive of revenge. Yeah. We also see that revenge motive kind of flip into cloud now mm-hmm. where cloud wants to take revenge on Sephiroth and yeah. that's his driving focus. Now, yes, they want to save the world. That's what they were trying to do. But now it's like, oh my gosh, this is more, it's more of a personal vendetta for cloud. Like I need to save air. I need to redeem mm-hmm. myself for what happened to Eris because cloud blames himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so that was iconic. Unfortunately, it was spoiled for me. I knew it was going to happen, but I can't imagine if I didn't know that would have been so cool. Um, but definitely a powerful well, moment. Um, rest in peace, Aerith. What were you going to say, Sean? I do remember uh, when I first like heard about like when I first witnessed it. Mm-hmm. I did get to witness it on my first playthrough because when I watched my dad originally play it, I didn't watch him play through the entire game. But I remember in 2003 playing it, it was right after Christmas 03 and I played it over like that Christmas break. Um, and I remember playing it and I was, you know, I talked to my dad about, oh, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And I remember him saying, oh, you're, you're coming up to a pretty uh, devastating part. I go, oh, OK. And I remember when it happened, I like I was like, no. And then I'm like the games. And I like put the <laughs> controller down and I, I ran up. I remember I, cause our PS, PS2 was in our basement. I ran upstairs and my dad was like, yeah, did you get to that part? I go, yeah. I go now. The, and then I was sad partially because I thought the game was over mm-hmm. as well. Then he's like, oh, just keep going, keep going. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah but like I said, like I said earlier, it's, it is kind of cool of you experiencing and knowing that part's happening because it does seem like a game ending kind of moment or the cl- a climactic moment for leading up to or leading up to the climax and just finishing. But the fact that, like yeah, you it's, said, it's, there's so much left after that game that thankfully that yep. wasn't spoiled for you, I hope. And just being yeah. able to experience that is so... I that's yeah like you said earlier that's the part I'm most interested about because you can compare the first half of the game with the two remake games that came out but now that's all fresh that's all new stuff you didn't know before and so that's kind of where you got to experience it for the first time which is really cool Hodge you used a nice literary term there the climax of the uh the plot pyramid so if we're on the plot pyramid we're still on it's crazy you would think the death of Aerith would be the climax but no we're in the rising action and yes yeah. i know i said what i said but it's a literary term folks Pause. No, literary no. Term. that's I, that's one of the few th- i was never a good english student but that's always the thing i remember is the, like the pyramid of the plot kind of thing i because then after yeah, we're the still in the rising action folks yeah then you got yep, climax. we're still in the we're still in the rising action yep <sighs> yep so Aerith gets killed um you know trying to summon holy uh we do later find out that she was successful uh at summoning holy but sephiroth was was stopping it he's a sneaky somehow. sneaky man um so where do we go after that i'm trying the series of events we go to the, after that yeah you uh, go to the northern continent you go to the northern continent you go to the icicle inn and yep. you kind of you learn more about Aerith's backstory about how um you learn more about because obviously you knew already that she was an ancient but you learn more about the history of the ancients and how she was the only one left and who her mother is and how it's connected to sephiroth and all of that yeah that's what happens next so yeah what were your thoughts on that yeah i mean that was really cool um i really liked going up there and just talking to everyone and hearing about you know what was going on with Aerith. um and then but like i said though like i feel like i was kind of rushing a little bit and that's why i kind of want to replay it because i probably missed some context uh the main thing that i remember when i got up there um was just trying to move forward ahead like i had to get the snowboard this is where you get the snowboard and slide down right is that right am i in the right spot yeah. So the main thing that I remember from up there, honestly, um, is just getting the snowboard and the snowboard mini game, trying to get down to the mountain, uh, trying to because I was all like I was like, OK, we have to kill Seth Roth now. That's where my head was at. I'm like, all right, we got to push ahead, get to where Seth Roth is and kill him because we have to get revenge for Aerith. Um, so that was like my sole focus. Um, so I think you slide down there. Um, right. 
Um, and then I'm trying to remember exactly what happens. I know that there was like a fortress. There was a force field uh, on the on the thing you couldn't get to immediately. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Refresh my memory, Sean. You played it 20 times. OK, well, um, well, you learn more. What happens is you get more of like a like like I said, you get more of a backstory about Aerith and her family. You learn more about evil Hojo taking taking um, Aerith and her mom captive and how they mm -hmm. escaped. And that only that adds to Cloud's motivation to kind of wanting to, you know, take down Sephiroth. So you travel around the northern crater. Like you said, you get the, you get the snowboard. Um, and then you you try to you try to go on a search for you're just trying to follow Sephiroth's tail basically, and you're trying to figure that out. And then eventually, we get to Sid, mm -hmm. and we learn more about Zach as well. Um, if you want to add anything, Hodge? No, I'm good. You keep going. Sorry, my dad okay. Trish tried calling me, so I'm telling him I'll call him back a little bit. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we meet Sid, and we finally get the airplane right. Um, we take off and then the airplane, it gets shot down or whatever. And then it turns into a boat. Um, and this is where the game kind of opens up. I remember you going around in the boat. Um, we went to the rocket town, first of all. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And this is where we find out that Sid wanted to be an astronaut and his, his chick ruined his dream because she was too slow on the repairs or whatever. So he had to board the launch. Um, so that was, you know, and he's like really rude to her. Um, but they have a nice little recap later on where like they, they kind of come together. Um, That's actually another one I'm excited to see, hopefully in the next game is I want to because you kind of see the little house with the rocket behind. I want to see what it looks like expanded, like a huge rocket and all. I want to see what that looks like. I hope I hope we get that. Yeah. A couple of the key things that really stood out to me in this latter section of the game, um, there was the moment in um, Junon or whatever, where the, you have the the Mako cannon. Um, where Shinra, they create this Shinra big, yeah. they create this huge Mako cannon. You have weapon is coming towards the city, right? And so they fire this giant Mako cannon. It goes right through and obliter obliterates weapon, destroys him, and it keeps on flying and it hits the northern crevice or whatever, which breaks the force field so that we can finally go in and take out Seth Roth. Um, that was a very key moment that I remembered from this latter section of the game. I thought that was super cool. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing that I remember from this section of the game is um, what was what was that mini game Fort Condor because uh, you go yeah, to the Fort, Fort Condor yeah, yeah. Um, and you have like this big epic Fort Condor battle um, which was a lot of fun like setting up all the little dudes and it's like a tower defense as they push up what did you guys think of like the mini games and Fort Condor in this um, did you enjoy it uh, I Fort Condor is a game that has grown on me as my playthroughs have um, come by i was never really like a big tower defense guy um but I, it's tower defense but it's like tower defense for like the you know slim down dumb down version of it basically uh i do like it i like how you can deploy forces and you're kind of just moving up moving up moving up and it, it it's not just like a mini game for mini game's sake you're actually advancing like you're like hey we're trying to do this so that you can go in there and kill sephiroth um one thing I do want to mention about the rocket thing you the um, launching the rocket in there mm -hmm. that was pretty cool how they um, basically they're like all right we're gonna use the Mako to our advantage and use this Mako and just try to take out what's gonna eventually kill us basically and it essentially succeeds so I mean they do what they need to do I like that and it gave Junon like a little bit more of like a hey Junon actually matters we're launching it from Junon yeah um, but yeah. Yeah, that was one thing that I was so another plot point in the story here in the end game was the whole rocket thing. Like you you get you gather these big material, right? So you have to go get these big material. And then you go back with Sid and you get in the rocket. And the plan is that we're gonna launch this rocket with the big materia to take out Meteor, right? Which is a cool idea. I mean, it's something that I feel like you would try. Um one thing I remember is I thought for sure this was it. I thought Sid was gonna die here. I'm like, there were saying goodbye to Sid. There were red flags everywhere. Um, but somehow I think Sid, he ends up living. Everybody kind of leaves on the uh, escape, the escape ship. Right. Um, and that whole thing, it kind of was for nothing because the missile did not stop meteor. Um, but that was a pretty cool moment. Um, what did you guys think about uh, that? And did you think it was over for Sid as well? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah, I did. I, especially considering that they killed Aerith. I'm like, oh, they have, they have no strings attached. I mean, Sid, this guy's like a throw-in. We haven't known him that long. Like, they're just going to wipe him out, too. But, again, you never know with them. Uh, you know, they, they do whatever they need to do. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Um, so we're going to go ahead and I guess get right to the ending before we get right to the ending though. And then, you know, our thoughts of the game overall, is there anything else from the story, the mini games, the open world or anything that you guys want to get to before we go to the big climax and the ending? Oh, really quickly. I do. Um, I do want to just kind of go back to the four condor thing. I, I liked that. It sucks that they took out that part of the game in the remake where it's cause it's an actual like battle. Whereas yeah. they made it a mini game, but I liked that in the new ones, you got to play it more than once. Cause in that it was just kind of your one and done and you're done and you move on. So I like that they expanded it in the remakes and made it a playable thing more often. Yeah. You could play Fort Condor um, in the early game uh, a few times, but yeah, at the end there, um, it was just one big battle, uh, which I lost by the way. It's funny. Um, I lost the battle on the mountain, but then they let you actually just go into a turn-based combat and fight. And that's when I won that. Um, did any of you guys actually win on the mountain, like the tower defense portion of it? Cause that was tough. There was a lot of enemies coming. I've won in the past. Yeah. Sean, the chat. Uh, it was yeah, I'm tough. trying to remember. It's, I don't remember the last time I, when I played it last, if I did or didn't, I know I played it, but I don't know if I won it or if I had to do the ending thing. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I do have a couple questions for you midnight. Right, um, shoot. So um, before we get to the final finale here. Um, so after when we say, you know, when cloud and Tifa are thrown into the life stream and they're down there, like, yeah. Oh yeah. We didn't talk about these, that. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you say, yeah. And you save them. Yeah. Um, there is some, there is an optional, um, it's like an optional cutscene that when you regain control of cloud, obviously you tell everyone about how like, Oh, you know, I'm not actually an ex soldier. Like, you, you know, your memory comes back. Yeah. And Tifa remembers, but you tell the whole party, but if you go back to the Nibelheim mansion, you can recall it. It talks about how him and Zach had escaped from Hojo and how it, it alludes to that scene in remake where it shows um, Zach walking in with cloud like you know with cloud's arm over him it alludes to that and it kind of talks about that a little bit i don't know did you get that or did you not do that um i don't think i did that um i did see that in the in the recap of course but um i don't remember if i went back because i i actually beat this like a month ago but um i do remember that was a really cool moment because i was really confused like what the hell is going on um because it's like you have like these conflicting memories where tifa's like he wasn't there uh in nibelheim and, and cloud's like clearly like i was there what are you talking about like i saw you get stabbed like and you're like <laughs> there's like this whole dynamic of like you know sephiroth is kind of screwing with cloud like it she's she's lying to you she's not even real or something um yeah but so it was cool when you were in the mako and then you get to go into cloud's memories um and you kind of he kind of figures out exactly who he really is that he really was that young cloud from the village who had a crush on tifa and they had their promise um and he really was there but he wasn't a soldier first class he was just a general rank and file soldier with a little helmet yeah, on. he, fa he failed he failed to get to the first class because he wasn't mentally capable of doing it yep and he so he failed. Um, and then we find out that Zach was actually him. So he, this whole time he was impersonating Zach uh, in his mind. Um, so that was really cool. Um, and it was cool that Cloud really regained his senses and was able to come back um, to go on the revenge tour and take out Sethroth. Um, so I thought that was cool. And that really cleared up a lot for me because even in the remake and stuff, I was confused um, while playing the, the two remakes that we have because they haven't cleared this up yet in the remake much yet, I don't believe. Like in Rebirth and stuff, have they? No, no, no. no. Uh, well, well, no. Kind, kind, yes, and no. They, I mean, they they expand on Zach, obviously, but they don't really explain what happens in it. Like Crisis Core is still kind of where you need to go for that. There's a dog in the background now. Yeah, doggo. I see. We like dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do get um before again before that. Um, I want to jump back a little bit. We, you know, we talked about character growth and character development and we had talked about how kate sith betrays the party yep um before before um we get some a little bit more redemption for kate sith when he helps he sneaks the party into save barrett and tifa mm -hmm. during um when shinra is basically casting them off as scapegoats in junon because he's trying to you know he's trying to again rufus is obsessed with power rufus shinra the shinra company wants to stay in power they're obsessed with it yep. and they're they're seeing the power be like drained from them so they're they're trying to mi um minimize the damage um they're trying to minimize like the public outcry and the public backlash at them so they scapegoat bear and tifa yeah but you see kate sith 
kind of helps the party and sneaks them in and can to save Bear and Tifa. So again, just a little bit more redemption. Again, we get a little bit more character growth there. Yeah, that was cool. Um, and also another big reveal is we found out who was controlling Kate Sith, which I thought was really cool. It was the the Shinra director dude, um, the guy who was yep. the guy who was like the coolest member of the executive committee. <laughs> he was the one who actually seemed like he cared a bit about like he didn't want to drop the plate on Sector Seven, for example. Um, you know, he so he's the one who's operating Kate Sith, and that's pretty cool. I was like, oh, that's a cool reveal. I didn't see that coming. Um. All right. Any other any final thoughts before that, before we jump to the ending, the climax? I'm sure I'll think of it in three hours when we're done recording. But for (laughs) now, no. (laughs) All right. So let's get to it. So after all of this crazy, fun stuff has transpired, finally, Cloud has his brain back. He has his memory. Uh, He's ready for revenge. They're able to now get into the crater where Sephiroth is at because of the beam. Um, so we make our way up there and we go down into the crater um, and we finally we find and we fight Sephiroth in a nice little yeah. two stage battle, um, which was really good, really good battle. You first fight like his ultimate like Genova, Genova form or whatever, um, which was really cool. Um, and then after that, you have shirtless Sephiroth uh, uh, where because Cloud realizes after the fact that uh, wait, Sephiroth isn't dead. Like I'm still sensing him. Um, and then cloud, like, I don't, I don't remember exactly how it happened, but like cloud, like goes into like some magical space and fights Seth Roth one V one and finally kills him for good. Um, so what, what were, what were your guys thoughts on that fight and the, and the general ending there? It was hard. <laughs> it was. That's what I had to use. I definitely had to use the cheats to beat it this last time. I forget. I don't know how I did it when I was a kid, <laughs> but it was, I was like, I, I suck at this. I got to use cheats. It was a hard fight. Um, Even with the cheats, I was worried about losing because like you can get one shot. Mm -hmm. And if you get one shot, like it doesn't matter that you have a healing on, you still die. Yeah. Um, And, and like Sephiroth's doing this attack where he's like literally destroying the solar system. You see like Jupiter and Mars and, and all these planets like blowing up and exploding. It's like, geez, chill out, bro. Mm -hmm. Uh, What were your thoughts on that, Sean? Uh, I think it's pretty cool where you fight them too. It's like, it's in the center of earth. It's in like the the planet's core. Like you're, you're right in that, that area where, like, where the planet would start, basically, essentially, like, rep- almost symbolizing, like, I am now, like, the planet. The mm-hmm. planet is me. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, before the fight, though, it is cool that, like, they 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 know it's like, all right, we have one week before Meteor Falls. Mm-hmm. We have to get there. And yeah. the day before they the day before they're going to depart, Cloud and Tifa have a little they almost do. like a little date night. Yeah, they spend the night together, and I don't know. It just Cloud and Tifa seem like. I mean, everyone wants Cloud and Aerith, but, you know, Cloud and Tifa, they're meant for each other and they spend the night together. And it's great because it it, it provides some levity for Cloud. Obviously, Cloud's under a lot of stress. The whole party is, yeah. but it provides some levity for Cloud and it, it, it shows how much Tifa really cares for him, mm-hmm. that she's able to provide that for him. But then again, yeah, the next day they go out, they go down to that that core and you fight Sephiroth and you fight Bizarro Sephiroth <laughs> and safe Sephiroth, who's... It's just like, it's wild how many times you have to fight them. And then that one-on-one fight. Oof. That, oh, that was Sean so cool. Struggled with that. Little Sean struggled with that. Yeah. I like, I always like when it comes down to like a one-on-one Cloud v. Sephiroth. I mean, that's like iconic. Safe yeah. Safe. And then you finally beat him with the special attack where you do like the, like the eight, the eight blade strike where it's like, and, and that's how you take yep. him out. At least for me, that's what happened. That was so cool. Safer Sephiroth, or as I like to call him, biblically accurate Sephiroth. <laughs> <laughs> with all the wings and whatnot yeah oh yeah it's a yeah. tough battle but it's it's definitely it's like it's better you know how there's so many games where at the end of it it's just kind of a boss rush and you just get every enemy just to say hey remember you yeah, did all this where enix games do yeah that. and yeah. so i like that yeah. this was like no you it's it's more of kind of like a thanos of like it all bled up to this and now it's a really tough boss and uh and yeah. even though you succeed you still there's still a lot of damage done to the planet. I mean, Midgar gets destroyed, mm-hmm, yeah. and the only reason why the planet doesn't get destroyed is because somehow Aerith from basically the the spirit world or like shout the, out Aerith from, from from the grave is Holy. able to stop it. Well, yeah. she because she had summoned Holy uh, before she died. She was yeah. successful. Um, Sethroth was the one stopping Holy. So when we kill Sethroth, Holy. Uh, combines with the life stream right and it creates like this these tendrils that come and stop meteor right but even so like yeah they, it alludes to the fact that Aerith is still commanding it from the in the life world, force yeah or 
and the life force because she's now part of the life force because she was an ancient so when she dies she goes back into the planet yeah I, I think that's pretty cool but again we see the outcome of it it's like not a 100 percent happy ending you know yeah midgar gets destroyed half some of the planets really damaged but overall they destroy sephiroth and yeah would you think about like how at the end of the game red 13 still alive it's like Years, hundreds of years later, like five hundred yeah. years or something. In the future. yeah, yeah, five hundred years. Yeah, who was he walking with? His kids. Oh, yeah, him and his kids. Yeah, that was cool. He he's got a long life cycle. Maybe he is a cat. He's got nine lives. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they when you're in when you're in Cosmo Canyon, I mean, you do learn about how like his species have been around for like thousands of years, and they're they they really only can die if like someone kills them because yeah. like yeah. They're the guardians of Cosmo Canyon. That was super cool, man. Just what an awesome game. It was so good. And, and yeah, I'm glad you brought it up because I totally forgot about the, the date night um, where Tifa and Cloud, they finally got to hook up and have some sexy times. And I think Cloud definitely. Okay, well, I don't know if that, that happens. Well, but... It definitely happened in, in my head canon. Um, he definitely <laughs> needed that. You know, <laughs> yeah, Cloud was it. Cloud was very tense. <laughs> he needed that, you know, before the boss fight. So shout out to Tifa. I'd say Tifa is definitely best girl, if you will, um, of the series, because uh, she's she's been there. She's been there from day one and she really cares about Cloud. Um, and she stayed with him when he was like kind of comatose in that village because he had the Mako poisoning. She was the one who stayed by to care for him. Um, before they went into the live stream and and say and and worked out his memories, right? So Tifa definitely was awesome in this. She was much better than Aerith in the original. Um, I do still think in the remake that Aerith is better, but that's a topic for another day. So final thoughts, guys. Let's final thoughts for Final Fantasy VII. Um, go ahead, and I'm, Sean. Give us your final thoughts, and then Hodge, and then I'll give mine as the guy who just played it for the first time. Overall, amazing game. Can't wait to replay it again. Shout out to Buenhagen. Yeah. Floating guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's floating awesome. guy. <laughs> I dude, I want a big I want a big material ball that I could just float around on. That'd be cool, dude. <laughs> yeah. Can I say one thing about him? Yeah. You know what I love about him? What? Is that he's like wicked, wicked smart. Oh, sorry, there's my Boston right there. Wicked smart. <laughs> wicked smart. Um, That's fine. Bring it out. He's man. like he's he's very intelligent, very, very intelligent human, but he acknowledges when he's wrong and he acknowledges that he needs to learn more and he learns more from the party, which I like that. So shout out to him. Shout out to him. And he was very helpful with us figuring out what we needed to do. He's uh, one of my favorite low key, like side characters. All right. So where does the, where does this game rank in like your all time games? Is this like in your top five, top three, my top 10? It was his number, number one, one on the episode that we did when we counted out yeah. our favorite games. Oh, yeah. it, it was, I forgot. <laughs> Yeah, it's the number one. It's like, I, I think how I look at it, though, is when the remake trilogy ends. When I say Final Fantasy VII, I, I, I'm like including everything. Like, seven remake. Like, it's like the Dirty seven. Con, con, you, yeah. Dirt, I do. I, I, I like their like servers. I, I do. Bit, like, <laughs> I yeah. say that somewhat for Jesus Lee, but I actually really do. It's very different. If you like Vincent you'll like oh, it. I loved Vincent as a kid. He was always my favorite yeah. as it, when I was a kid. I loved the edge Lord emo looking dude. So I, I loved Let's it. Get the dare to Cerberus VR game remake. Let's get Ooh, it. That'd be awesome. But, uh, my final, how about you really quickly? Yeah. I, I forgot to say this earlier, but the one thing I do remember was when you're in the golden sauce and you go on the date with Aerith and the, oh, yeah. like, if that's kind of the natural way of who you go with, if you're just doing it as whatever. But uh, I remember thinking, like, playing it, like, I didn't, I never got really a connection from them. In the newer ones, like, they, throughout the thing, she's kind of, she's kind of the, um, like, she knows that he needs, she needs to get him out of his shell kind of thing. So she's always pushing him, like, remember, this is a date night, like, kind of thing. Like, in, and so I felt it more in that one, even though I'm Team Tifa. But in the original, yeah, I never really like how you were saying, like, you didn't really care about Aerith as much in this game uh, versus mm -hmm. the newer ones. And that's kind of how I felt as well, where like I, Aerith is a great character, but you never really got that connection in the original one. Like, it just felt like suddenly they were together. It's like I never really got like the flirtatious or not at all out of it, but it didn't seem like she cared about cloud at all in, in the original. But yeah. Really. But my overall uh, thoughts is, as I said before, it's probably, it's probably a top 25 game for me, not number one, maybe top 15 even, but yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic game. And overall I'm happy you finally played it and I love it. 
Yeah, me too. So I guess my final thoughts for Final Fantasy VII, like I said, is, this game's awesome. Um, it's probably in my top top 30 games of all time Uh, it's not in the top 10 it's not all the way up there but it it was great Um, I absolutely love the world and the story and Sephiroth one of the best villains ever and we didn't even talk about the music dude his theme song Sephiroth dude his music was so awesome yeah One Winged Angel dude I have the I have the original soundtrack on like I have a video game playlist on on Spotify and I prefer actually like the new one's great they made it like super orchestral and epic and stuff but I love the Mm -hmm. PS1 sounding like like that old school soundtrack sound where it's like they couldn't get the, 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 I don't know if the file sizes or whatever, where they couldn't fit in like these amazing orchestral themes, but they were a little yeah. more basic. And I love, I love the soundtrack of this game. Yeah. It's just so Here good. Suffering. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I'm just I'm just really happy that I finally played this game. Thank you guys for convincing me and telling me that I need to play it. Um, now I'm even more excited about the uh, the third part of the remake because I can't wait to see what they do with everything that transpires afterwards. I want to see the snow world. Um, I want to do the SSX snowboarding. Um, I want to see the Mako cannon. I want to see you know the travel through clouds memories. I want to see it all. Um, it's going to be awesome. Um, I, can't I can't wait, wait to see Sid's combat and Sid and Vincent's combat. Yeah, I want to see Vincent's yeah. combat because he didn't fight at all in the remake yet. Yeah, you know, he's I'm very just been hanging out. How, how Vincent and Sid are. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. Um, that's it. Final Fantasy VII, the original. Shout out to them. Uh, what an amazing game. Nine out of 10 for me, like I said. Um, super good. And I am at some point, you know, not anytime soon, but in a year or two or three, I am going to go back and replay that game. And I'm going to be a lot more thorough to make sure that I, uh, you know, go to Wu Tai and. Uh, all the all the little stuff that I kind of missed because I was redlining it. Um, I'm sure I'll like it even more on the second playthrough. Um, but what an awesome game. Shout out to Cloud. Shout out to Barrett. Shout out to Yuffie. Shout out to all these awesome characters. Red 13, he's still alive somewhere right now. We saw him at the end. So uh, hopefully he's living his best life. <laughs> um, but that's been it for us. This has been Games Over Plastic Final Fantasy VII Spoiler Cast. And we're going to go ahead and get up out of here, guys. Um, Sean? Go ahead and say bye to everyone. Any last thoughts? Uh, if you if you want to replay, I was going to say if you haven't played, but you would be listening to this if you haven't played it. Uh, if you want to replay Final Fantasy VII, go do it. Let us know what you think. Absolutely adore this game. Can't wait. Awesome job. Let's go. Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, let us know in the comment section if you guys have played it recently or just in general um, what you thought and what your favorite moments were or anything that we missed or that you want to sound off in the comments, let us know, leave a like on this video. As always, we appreciate it. Um, Hodge final thoughts and, uh, and say goodbye to everybody. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. As I said, great game. Everyone should play it if you haven't, but if you're listening to this and you haven't, you're, you're a fool. Um, But, (laughs) but yeah, it's, it's an amazing, it, it has, it has its reputation for a reason and I'm happy you played it. And yeah, it's, I love it. I love I love this world entirely. And like you like Sean said, every game I I didn't play Crisis Core until recently. And uh, I played Dirge back when I was a kid. And it's just, yeah, I love this entire even Advent Children. It's not that great, but I still enjoy it. It was I always loved it as a kid because of the graphics of that movie, even though even though they're not worse than what video games look like. But yeah, I love this world. It's awesome. But that's all I got. Yes, sir. So I need to play um, Crisis Core Mm -hmm. at some point. I'm going to do that. That's on my to do list. So I'll play Crisis Core. It's usually pretty cheap. Like I got it, I think, for like 20 bucks. So you can probably get nice. Probably find it on sale, Black Friday sale or something. So I'll get to that and that'll be a good time. And I also I need to play catch up just in general on Final Fantasy because I never played Final Fantasy four. I never played Final Fantasy six. Um, I have because they came out with those remakes uh, recently on PS5. Pixel remasters Um, or whatever. Yeah, the Pixel Remasters. I added that cat. I know you love Final Fantasy VII, but I'm recording a podcast, please. He He's a huge Tifa fan. Um, and who could blame him? But um, yeah, so I added those to my wish list so I can see if they go on a nice sale or whatever. I'm going to scoop those up and play those too. But uh, yeah, Sephiroth, shout out Final Fantasy VII, freaking masterpiece game. Thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you. And we hope you have a great day and a great week and everything. Goodbye. Please clap. Please clap. Goodbye. Bye.